Hello all, welcome to this new lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed about control structures in generic. And in this lesson, let us learn about conditional control structures more specifically. Okay, so having said that, let's get started. So there are three different conditional control structures that are supported in C language. And they are if, if else, and else if ladder. So these are the three different conditional control structures that are supported in C language. And let us learn each of these one by one. Okay. So before learning how these works, it is important that you must understand two important things. First one is, as you can see, I have written condition over here at several places, condition, condition, and condition. So you must know what do you mean by this condition? And second thing is that you must know what do you mean by a block of statements? Okay. So let us start with this condition. So this condition can be any expression that will result in either a true value or a false value. Let me repeat. This condition can be any expression that must either result in a true value or a false value. So when I say true value, it must be a non-zero value. And when I say false value, it must be a zero value. Okay. So therefore, these conditions can be any expression that can either result in a true value or a false value. Okay. That is the first thing. And second thing is that, what do you mean by a block of statements, right? So a set of zero or more statements written within a pair of open brace and close brace becomes a block of statements. Okay. So as you can see, this is a block of statement. And this block is called as a if block because this pair of open brace and close brace is associated with the keyword if. Similarly, this is called as an if block and this is called as an else block. Okay. So this is called as an else block because these pair of braces are associated with the keyword else. Okay. So similarly, this is an if block, this is else if block, this is else if block, and this is called as an else block. Okay. So now I feel that you pretty much understand what do you mean by this condition and what do you mean by a block of statements. Okay. So if you have understood that, now let us go and learn how these conditional control structures works one by one, right? So let us start with the simplest one and that is if statement, right? Now, in this case, if this condition evaluates to be true, then the program control will enter into this if block, execute the set of statements which are there as part of this block and then come out of this block and execute the rest of the statements, okay? That is in our case, it is set of statements too, right? Let me repeat. If this condition evaluates to be true, then the program control will enter into this block, execute the set of statements that are there as part of this block, and then come out and execute the rest of the statements. Whereas if this condition results to be false, or if this condition evaluates to be false, then the program control will skip this block. That is, the program control will not enter into this, into this block. It will ignore this block, and then come and execute the rest of the statements following this block. Okay, so this is how your if statements will work. Okay, also it is important to note that the conditions has to be given within a pair of parentheses like this. Okay, so as you can see, every condition has been given within a pair of parentheses. This is very important, right? Now coming to if else statement, right? In this case, if this condition evaluates to be true, then the program control will enter into this if block and execute the set of statements that are part of this if block. Okay, whereas if this condition results in false, then the program control will ignore this if block and the program control will enter the else block, execute the set of statements that are part of the else block and then comes out of this control structure and starts executing the rest of the statements that are after this if else control structure. Okay, so let me repeat. If this condition happens to be true, then the program control will enter into this if block, ignore the else block, and then start executing the statements after this if else condition. Okay. Whereas if this condition evaluates to be false, then the if block would be ignored or the if block would be skipped and the program control will enter into the else block, execute the set of statements as part of this else block, and then continue with the rest of the statements that are there or that have been written after the if else statement. Okay. So this is the second kind of conditional control structure. And in the third kind, okay, first thing is that it will check if this condition is true or false. Okay, if, if it checks if it is true or false. And if, the, if this condition happens to be true, then the program control will enter into this if block 
and it would ignore the rest of the blocks. Okay, so once it enters into this if block, it will execute the set of statements as part of this if block, and the rest of the you know uh, blocks would be ignored. Whereas if the condition happens to be false, then the if condition or the if block would be ignored, and the program control will enter into the else if uh, condition, and it now checks if this condition is true or false. Okay. So if this condition is true, then it will enter into this else if block and executes the set of statements and ignores the rest of the blocks. Whereas if else if condition happens to be false, then even else if block would be ignored and it moves on to the next else if condition to check if this condition is true or false, right? So if this condition happens to be true, then the program control will enter into this else if block and executes the set of statements which is there as part of this else if block and ignores the rest okay whereas even if this else if condition returns to be false or evaluates to be false then even this else if block would be ignored and then the program control will enter into this else block and executes the set of statements which are there as part of your final else block and then comes out and executes the rest of the statements okay so in either case if any of these conditions becomes true right so that corresponding block will be executed and once that set of statements within that block is executed it will come out of this you know uh, conditional control structures and will continue with the rest of the statements that are there out of this uh, control structures okay that is the con conditional control structures okay so i think now you understood how these different you know conditional control structures work okay so let us see a few examples so that you will be in a position to understand this better okay now so let us see a few examples now. So these are few examples for uh, if statements. So how does this work in the first case? Okay. So let us see what is the condition, whether it results in a true or false value. So if five is greater than four, so we know that five is greater than four and therefore this condition will, res will result in a non-zero value, which is nothing but true. Therefore the control will enter into this if block and print hello. It will print hello. And once it executes the statements as part of this if block, it will come out and execute the rest of the statements. That is high. So therefore, the output of this code snippet is hello and hi. Okay. Now coming to this example two. In this case, is nine less than four? Okay. No, right. Therefore, the condition becomes false. That is, if of false, if of zero becomes false. Therefore, the program control will not enter into this block. This block would be skipped, and it starts. The program control will come to this statement following this if block, and it would print hi. Okay. Therefore, this is how you are. Uh, you know, if condition works when the condition becomes false, right? Now, coming to the next example. So we know that any non-zero value is considered as true value. Therefore, if of condition, it become the condition has become true. Therefore, if of true uh, happens that, you know, the, con the program control will enter into this block. It prints hello. And once it, once it executes the set of statements as part of this if block, it comes out and then prints hello high. It will start executing the rest of the statements after your if statements. Right. In this case, we know that in C language, zero is considered as false. Therefore, if of false okay, happens and there, the program control will not enter into this if block, it would be skipped and the rest of the statements would get executed. Therefore, the output would be high. Right. So I hope you now understood how the simple if statements will work. Right. Now, having said that, let us move on to some other examples. Okay. So in, uh, in this slide, you have examples for if else statement. Okay, so let us see how it works. So as I told you earlier, if this condition is true, then the statements as part of your if block will be executed. Else, if this condition happens to be false, then the if block would be uh, ignored and the else block would be executed. Okay, so in this case, is four less than five happens to be true. Four is less than five, therefore it results in a one value. So one is a non-zero value. It means that it is true value. Therefore, once if of true happens, then the program control will enter into this if block. It will execute this statement, which is nothing but hello. Okay. And it will ignore the else block and then continue with the rest of the statements after your conditional control structures. Okay. So the statement after the conditional control structure is namaste. So the output would be hello namaste. Right. Now, coming to the next example. In this case, okay, if four is greater than five, this condition happens to be false. And if this condition is false, okay, it will result in a zero value. And if of zero is false, therefore, this block would be skipped and the program control will enter into the else block. Okay, and therefore, the set of statement as part of your else block will be executed. That is, it prints high and then comes out and executes the rest of the statements. Okay, so that is after your conditional control structure, which is nothing but namaste. Therefore, the output would be high namaste. 
Okay, so I think these examples gave you an understanding of how if else statements will work, right? So let us work on a few more examples. Okay, so uh, this is an example for else if ladder. So let us see the first example. So if condition, right? So four is less than five. So therefore, this condition happens to be true and it will result in a value of one. So if our one is true, if it is true, the program control will enter into this block, execute the statements and say hello. It says hello, okay, and then ignores the rest of the block. This would be ignored and this would be ignored because the first block will be executed over here, right? So therefore, the output is hello. Now, coming to example two, in this case, five is greater than four is, uh, you know, false. Therefore, this will result in a zero value. So if of zero is false, therefore, this block will be skipped and the control will now come to the else if to see if this condition is true or not, okay? So now it checks this condition. Is five greater than four? Okay, yes, this will result in a true value. That is nothing but one value. And else if condition is non-zero means it is true. And once it is true, the program control will enter into this block and it prints high, right? So the output would be high and the rest of the blocks would be ignored. It would be skipped, right? Now, coming to the third example, okay, first, the program control will start from uh, the condition checking from here, from the if block. Therefore, is five greater than four? It is false. Therefore, this block is skipped. And now it comes and checks the else if condition. Is six equal to equal to four? No, again, this becomes false. Okay, even this block would be skipped. And then if none of the blocks matches, if none of the uh, conditions uh, becomes uh, true, then the else block, the program control will enter into the else block and the statements within the else block will get executed, okay? So therefore the output would be uh, namaste. Therefore the output is namaste, okay? So hope you understood how these, uh, you know, uh, conditional control structures work, okay? So I feel I must give you a few examples practically so that you will be able to understand this better, okay? So let us work on a few examples uh, using C++ ID. Okay, and then understand how this works, right? So I'm going to open my uh, dev C++. So as you can see here, I've written a simple C program to find whether a given number is odd or even. So we know that any uh, given value when divided by two exactly, if it results in a zero value, then it means that the given number is uh, even number. And if any value that does not get divided by two exactly, then that value can be considered as a odd number, right? So this is a program to find out whether a given number is odd or even. So initially, okay, I have taken two variables. One is num and a result of type integer. Okay, and then I tell the user to enter a number. So when the user enters a number, the scanner will pick up the number and store it in the variable num. So, okay, so in this example, num is a variable which contains a value which we will have to determine as to whether it is a odd number or a even number. Okay, now then I've used a module operator over here and then I divide the given number the, the number that has been inputted by the user. Okay, so I divide that by two. And if it exactly, you know, if it gives me a reminder as zero, it means that that number is exactly getting divided by two and that is an even number, isn't it? So that is the reason, okay, I store the result of num modulo two into this variable result. And I'll check if the value of result is equal to equal to zero, okay? So if it is equal to equal to zero, then I would say percentage D is even, which is nothing but number is even. And else, if it is not equal to equal to zero, it means that it is an odd number. So I say, percentage d is odd and you know the the uh, number is present in the variable num right so this is a simple program so let me run this code and show you whether it works or not okay so i'm compiling this code the compilation is successful there are no errors or warnings let me run this code so the program is asking me to enter a number so let me say three and you know that three cannot be divided by two exactly Therefore, the result will not be equal to zero. And therefore, it says three is odd, okay? So having said that, now let me run this program once again so that you know, to work with some other input. Let me run this code once again. It says enter a number once again. This time I'll enter an even number and it must say four is even, okay? So this is a simple C program to find whether a given number is odd or even, right? So hope you understood how I've used if else conditional control structure to you know find out whether a given number is odd or even, right? Now, so let me give you one more example, okay, using LC ladder to print the grades uh, of a particular student, right? So let me open that file. So as you can see here, okay, this program, this is a program to find the class grade. Okay, so it says, first I've taken two variables, one is score and result. 
then I tell the user to enter the score between one to hundred. Okay, and then scanf is used to uh, take the score and you know through the keyboard and uh, up once I'm once I've taken the uh, uh, input, I will be storing it into this variable score. Right, and then now I check if the score is greater than or equal to seventy. So if the input given by the user is greater than or equal to seventy, then I would print you got a distinction. And if suppose if it is not greater than seventy, and if the score is greater than or equal to sixty, then I would say you got a first class. Okay. Similarly, if the score is greater than or equal to fifty, then I would say you got a second class. Else, if the score is greater than or equal to thirty-five, okay, I would print you just got a pass. Else, if none of these conditions matches, okay, then it means I would just say you have failed. Okay. So again, this is a very simple program that is demonstrating the LCF ladder, right? So let me run this first. Compile this and then run it to make sure if there is no warnings or errors. There are no warnings or errors. Now let me run this code, and it says enter the score one to hundred. Okay. So now let me first enter ninety eight. Okay. So we know ninety eight is greater than or equal to seventy, right? So if score is greater than or equal to seventy, so when I say ninety eight, that ninety eight will go and sit in this variable score. And now when I say score is greater than or equal to seventy, so ninety eight is greater than or equal to 70 therefore if condition matches and we will get the output as you got a distinction right so let me now uh, press enter key as you can see you got a distinction right now let me run this code once again with a different input so that to see uh, how this else uh, ladder works right so now i'm going to give an input that is you know greater than or equal to 60 but less than 70 right so now i would enter say 65 Okay, so when I say sixty-five, uh, the control, the program control will first check the condition if the score is greater than or equal to seventy. So sixty-five is not greater than or equal to seventy. Therefore, this condition becomes false. Okay, and now it comes to the else if condition. It sees if score is greater than or equal to sixty. And in my case, it is sixty-five. Therefore, score is greater than or equal to sixty. And therefore, this condition matches. And the program control will enter into this block and says you got a first class. Okay, so let me run this. It says you got a first class. Okay, so I want you to try the same program with different inputs and see how it works. Okay, so though I have shown it practically to you, I want you to uh, do it on your computer. Okay, practically I want you to type it and do it right now. Pause the video. Go do this right now before you know watching this lesson further. Okay. So if you have done that, okay, I think we have come to the end of this lesson on conditional control structures. Okay, so hope you learned something new in this lesson. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. In upcoming uh, lesson, I'm going to teach you about looping control structures. Okay, using uh, for loop and while loop and all such kind of stuffs. Okay, so if you enjoyed this lesson, then don't forget to like this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any kind of updates about this programming series. Okay, having said that, meet you in the next lesson. Until then, take care. Bye bye. I love you all so much.